Do -do 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 -do. I mean, yo, uh, fire! <laughs> yo, this episode of One Piece slaps, man. This was the long-awaited, highly acclaimed Blackbeard versus Law, Law on Winter Island, and man, oh man, this did not. This absolutely, positively did not miss. And I gotta give, of course, big credits to people that were part in the creation of this episode of One Piece. So if you don't know, now you know. Here are some names you should know. Tell me. Yu Yoshiyama, Shotaro Ban, Henry Thurlow, Katsumi Ishizuka, Nao Toshi, AKA Goat Toshi Shida, Ji Gwang Liu, Fasto, Juni, Chris, Toei Phils, which I believe is a Toei Filipino branch. Alan Geraldino. Those were some animators that were part of the creation of this episode of One Piece. The storyboard was done by Sho Inozuka and Katsumi Ishizuka. Animation director was Kazuya Kisada. And I have to, without a doubt, be hella biased for this episode of One Piece. Because particularly, this one hits the heart because who was a part also in some of the content in this episode of One Piece, Eric Perlato of the Red Force Podcast. That's right, Correct Mundo. This is Eric's debut in animating scenes for the One Piece anime itself. Absolutely dope. Yeah. Wicked sick, and his name will be written in the annals of time when it comes to the creation of the One Piece anime for Toei, without a damn doubt. So honestly, yo, you, you love to see it. Absolutely you do, you love to see it. He did do a little bit of the Blackbeard stuff with the quake at the very, very end. And then it cuts to Doc Q. And according to him, that is where most of the animation work was done. And you can check out the Red Force podcast link in the box below. This to me was a big deal because I love to see it. I, I, I definitely do. Because I mean, th this guy has come a long way because he used to make uh, a lot of merchandise stuff for me back in the day for some of my merchandise, some of my t-shirts. And shout outs to the legendary Running Girls animations. Absolutely. Hopefully it's just the beginning of a great journey for him because I would love to see him do a lot more stuff in the future and, and make it all the more over the top and damn dope, which this episode without a doubt was. So let's get to that. This episode of One Piece, man, they took chapter 1063, just the law and Blackbird content, and then 1064, just the law and Blackbird content. And what they, oh, oh man. And they also added the Kuzan and Von Auger. Oh boy. Oh, no, 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 no. They added the Kuzan and Von Auger material to the episode as well. So they animated a full blown cover story that was done mostly by, as far as I understand, Henry Thurlow. Okay, before we get to that, the content involving uh, Law and Blackbeard was absolutely outstanding. However, there was something that was quite egregious, quite disgusting, and absolutely nuts. It's 2024, the current year. How dare Trafalgar and Law insinuate that he is feeling physically weaker because he transformed into a female? How dare Law? That was uncalled for. As a very progressive, black dyslexic male in the current year. That was something I will not stand for. Absolutely not. <laughs> Actually, I'm lying. There is one thing I do think is odd on, on God, the hockey stuff. I was looking forward to seeing if BB was using Conqueror's hockey or not when he attacked Law when Lost Submarine was under the water. Cause in the manga, it's kind of unclear. In the anime, when I see BB do the red bolts, I say, ah, 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 and then you see him charge up, I'm like, yeah. All right, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing the Conqueror's, the Conqueror hockey infusion. Red lightning, similar to your Raylian Shanks. Raylian Shanks. I'm like, whoa, okay, confirmed. But then Law throws a monkey wrench into all this. When he breaks out, he also has red lighting. I'm like, what the, what? That was really confusing. Because as far as we know, based on the manga, Kid and Luffy have Conqueror's Hockey, but Law amongst that trio lacks Conqueror's Hockey. 
I did a tweet about it. I'm like, yo, does anyone know what's going on with this whole stuff? No idea. No, no one really knows. In the Wano country, we had a myriad of different Color of Conquerors ability sets. And it is a bit annoying, but I can't really fault the episode and the animators and the director themselves for that. Because in reality, Oda himself has made Conqueror's hockey pretty confusing. But outside of that, let's talk about what was actually just an epic. Obviously, when they surface and they're on Winter Island, and you have Jesus Burgess just tweaking. And then he throws the mountain. Okay, that was dope. But then when Law does the reroute, at first, my if you don't know, my reaction to this whole thing was first done on my Patreon. Later this week, real soon, upload to the Kosan YouTube channel where I put all of my anime reaction content, all of it. So I thought that Law had actually put a room around the whole island, but no, we just see him actually apply the room to Blackbeard. It took me a second, but the way the way it looked, like, wait, hold on, hold on. Did he just put a room on the whole the the whole island? <gasps> Bacana. I'm like, yo, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait! This is when Vincent Chanzard sticks his head out. And when he does, everyone is on notice. When the lion moves, every meerkat is on notice. Blackbeard's attack. <laughs> the tremor crush was intense. And it did confirm, based on the anime, that he is using hockey along with the ability itself. So this does, I think, make Law's whole feats of countering BB's quick attacks look even better, like I've been saying for a while now, because they were hockey-infused. They were hockey-infused quake attacks. And the Tremor Crush is applying so much pressure to Law and company in that area, and the way it looked was absolutely outstanding. It, it, it was so damn good. And there are other moments here and there, too, that were just epic as well. And even though I love, oh, I love, I absolutely positively love the shock willy that Law hits BB with. And BB going, Boo! just in Wano Country, it feels like the anime version is inferior to the manga version. Because in the manga version, 1064, the way it looks, it looks like you have just geysers of blood erupting from the target's body. And in the anime, you kind of see that like briefly. But then they color contrast it to make it less graphic. And then it's not as much blood compared to what we see in the manga version. Obviously, we have this shout out here to Lost Crew. Because Lost Crew, for the most part, they're known for being just bumps. And Law just hard, hard, hard carries them. And we'll get to one character real soon. But Sachi, Penguin, Ayo, hey, hold on. That's all because there's no water around us. When we have water like Fishman, we're just weird. And we're hella effective. So Lost Crew. That has, for the most part, gotten a D in a damn near every test in high school where they were barely able to pass middle school. Barely be able to pass middle school. All of a sudden now, they're doing relatively well in the SATs. And all they needed was some Gatorade. They needed some hydration. That's kind of nuts. All right, bet. I can't believe I'm saying that because law school, again, they, they, they're supposed to suck. But no, no, no. They suck in water to deflect bombs. Bet. However, <laughs> one moment that was not necessarily a big deal at all in the manga was the moment involving Monsieur Von Auger and John Bart. John Bart blocks a bullet from Von Auger. Okay. He has a very tough body. The guy is actually probably a buccaneer. I, I, I'll keep it a sack. He's probably a buccaneer. But blocking a single bullet? Unless you're Ben Beckman, is that really a big deal? Well. Well, the added content in this episode that we get with the cover story would suggest it is. And oh my God, on Twitter, people are taking this and they're running, they're running for the hills with this, bro. Who's on defeats Cracker? And that was epic as hell. The way he did it, where he froze his legs so he couldn't, and then he just teleports over. Hits him on the shoulder. Ah, da, da, da. Ah, da, da. And the way Henry did that was so damn dope. The the effects over Kuzan's body, which I think was done with somebody else, actually, not Henry Thurlow. But that being said, the way it was done was just absolutely outstanding. The aura he had when he took out Cracker. And to be fair to Cracker, it is a 2v1. 
one. And then two is that Cracker is not pain tolerant. Luffy one shot at Cracker and so did Kuzan. At the same time, even though Kuzan does what he does, it's to be expected because it's Kuzan. Kuzan's kind of nuts, but Vaughn Auger just... Cracker makes three Biscuit clones on the spot. Vaughn Auger warps away. And then when the Biscuit clones are looking for Vaughn Auger, ding, boom, he snipes all three of these things in the skull and each one of them gets eliminated with a single shot to the skull by Vaughn Auger. The same things that gave Luffy a pretty hard time. Let's not talk about when Cracker is inside the body because when he's inside the body, against Luffy, you could argue he's hardening the Biscuit bodies from within, fair enough, fine. But the ones that he made as like an assault troop to stand against Luffy, those Biscuit clones were able to withstand gear four bound man attacks. No, that, I rewatched that scene like several times. It's one of those moments was, hold on, time out, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this canon? It's always the question of, hey, hold on, in the anime, whether it doesn't necessarily matter if let's say it's One Piece or a uh, Naruto or a Dragon Ball Z or let's say a Beelzebub, whatever it is, right? The anime is an adaptation of the manga. That does not necessarily mean that it's canon. Things like the Thousand Year Blood War, which are somewhat supervised by Taite Kubo, the author of the series, yeah, they're canon, fair enough, fine. But is this canon? Cause yo, that was scary. Cause what they're insinuating is that Vaughn Auger can output vastly more power than a gear four Bowman Luffy fresh out of Dressrosa. I cannot conceive of that. Because if that's the case, that would imply that basically if John Bart was on Dressrosa, he would take every attack from Doflamingo and power through that like it was nothing. He would actually all right wrong and do better better than Law, potentially even Gear 4 Bowman against Doflamingo because Dofi have no way of hurting John Bart because John Bart can take a bullet from Von Auger who can destroy a Cracker Biscuit soldier in a single shot when Gear 4 Bowman Luffy, who is effectively stronger coming out of Dressrosa, he couldn't do that. <laughs> no, that's like Frankie. Or maybe even like unironically, like a Cavendish or a Bartolomeo being stronger than Luffy. No. No. Wait. No. Can't buy it. This is a filler. Filler, filler, filler thing. Crazy moment. I, I, I personally would not. Again, this is why I lean heavily towards the manga. But when I need anime to like clarify things, I do use anime at times. Though, when I do do that, I do specify it's anime. You don't have to necessarily take it as canon because animes aren't necessarily canon. So you can say, okay, well, King's Coven, but at the same time, when I do power scale, I again, I lead vastly with the manga because it is the primary canon material. It is what it is. I'm not against it in terms, let's say like, you know, them being powerful pirates. Of course, they're gonna be powerful pirates, obviously. But Von Auger is gonna be like an Usopp fight in the future. Usopp can like take a bullet from Von Auger in the future. And we're factoring in what he did in this episode? Oh, y'all, Usopp is looking like, at that point in time, I'm like actual guard Usopp. Oh, yo, yo, that's gonna be crazy. My headcanon theory right now is, okay, if we want to take it at face value, then Von Auger, we know, can pinpoint a seagull from like well beyond the horizon, bro. And what we saw on route to Jaya, what Chopper saw when that seagull die got shot, let's say it was able to pinpoint weaknesses in the Cracker Biscuit clones, shot them and took them out like that. Cause otherwise it's just too much. John Bar cannot be, he, I'm, I'm sorry, this is, this is, no. I refuse. It doesn't make any sense. Unless Oda says, hey, King Lightning, you're wrong. Shut up. Jean Bart is that guy. Von Auger is that guy. All right, fine. But I do absolutely, positively, without a doubt, undeniably appreciate what Henry and company did for those scenes. Because those scenes were just epic, man. There's going to be some Von Auger fanboys and fangirls and posters and stickers on cars of Von Auger because of what they did. Cause that was nuts. And Kuzan, he's a thumbnail. The way he did that might've been worse 
than Jozu. And Jozu lost an arm. That's saying something. <laughs> Jesus, man. Woo. That's saying a lot. The episode was outstanding from then on. We have the clash between Law and BB again, where we have the Awakening, the K Room on the sword against the Quake Attack, which is Hockey and Fuse, which I love to see. They're popping off and come the very, very, very end. Oh my God. When he has the Kuros to activate. Remember, Blackbeard, for all the broken things that we see Luffy do, keep in mind that Blackbeard literally counters every Devil Fruit user in the story. Kurozu, and the way the color contrast starts to change from regular to black and white, I, I thought was fantastic. Someone had a comment in my comment section on my Patreon where they should have ended off the two continued in that black and white fashion. If they had done that with the darkness seeping below, that, that would have been like gold, like honest to goodness gold. But the episode of my personal opinion, I thought slapped. I thought it was like an 8, 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was great minimum. Be on the lookout on my other channels for those reactions. And my Patreon's already there, duh. So on that note, like the video, comment, subscribe. I'm going to see you guys later. Peace the F out. See you. Bye-bye.